over the break, uh, Elizabeth, you had said that there are remediation programs. There are a lot of things that the county offers to help contractors and homeowners navigate their way through these issues. And do you want to tell us a little bit about sure. that? Sure. Well, the county and the city both offer some uh, what are called let's safe work practice classes. And as Susan mentioned earlier, those are there are some free classes available that even a homeowner, anybody can take. I've taken the class myself. It was very interesting. Um, at this point, those classes are kind of booked up, so you need to get on a waiting list. Um, there are other classes. If you happen to be a member of the Better Contractors Bureau, you can take the refresher class or the uh, EPA uh, RRP class through the Better Contractors Bureau and get a little bit of a discount on the classes. We also offer the City of Rochester, because of our lead ordinance, um, uh, we are entitled to get a free visual inspection of our homes. You can call the City of Rochester at 428-LED to request that. You can also get, if you live in Monroe County, you can get that through the ABC Lead Resource Center. And those, the, all of that information is available on the Coalition to Prevent Lead Poisoning's website at www.leadsafeby2010.org. We are, as I said, an, ed an education advocacy organization, so we list all the information. We have the county's information. We have the city's information. There's also some uh, funding sources uh, for individuals if they want to uh, do some lead safe work practice work in their homes. The county has some grants that are available. NeighborWorks um, also has some grants, and the city has some grants. I mean, the, the funding is limited. There's no question about that. But there are some resources out there for uh, individuals who want to make these these improvements to their homes and do it in a way that doesn't um, create health hazards. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that with us. And I'm going to put that um, right up to the uh, property source, um, property source radio.com website, excuse me, so that uh, our listeners can get those resources. And thanks again for sharing that with Thank us. You. Over the break, uh, Carm, you had asked the question and uh, perhaps um, uh, Susan would want to take this one. <laughs> Welcome back, Susan. Hi. Um, once a child is affected, possibly mm -hmm. by lead, right? Is there a way to tell other than than blood testing? Are there signs? Are there uh, side effects? That kind of thing. Uh, not normally at the levels that we're dealing with. Um, even uh, kids that require hospitalization, chelation, normally aren't seeing symptoms at that time. It's normally when they get into the school system and they have pr trouble producing in school, focusing. Um, actually completing work that um, That's schools mean. will often get the lead levels as part of, you know, their committee for special education work to see, you know, what things might be impacting the child. So That's you, huh? I yeah. think it's me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't concentrate. I can't even sit still in class. I, I've taken classes, li literally. I, I don't even know. It could be a little mild... Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, I'm no, saying we, it jokingly. We, I'm have you ever been tested? No, and sincerely, I don't know. we weren't testing at that same rate. Yeah. But, you know, until early 90s, we weren't really testing the way we are now. Any, anybody. And, right. and, and you know, yeah. and, and when, when you're talking about costs, you know, and yes, mm -hmm. there's a cost. I mean, but we're also talking about long-term costs. So if you're looking at kids who require special education, education et cetera, right. all yeah. of those, I mean, those are societal costs. Those aren't, you know, those yes. aren't just coming out of your individual pocketbook. Those are things we're going to be paying for for years. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that and, you know, there's a lot of different um, aspects to this uh, particular um, issue with the lead safe practices and having contractors and making sure that they're certified. And what would you like to tell our listeners if they are considering a renovation, if their home was built before 1978, what should they be looking from, from, from a contractor today? If they're getting an estimate today. What should they be looking for? Be delicate, please, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> well, EPA has provided this tool now. Um, they should ask if this firm is a lead safe certified firm. There's an actual certificate that EPA is issuing to the people, and it has their lead safe logo on it. Um, okay. The certified renovator is supposed to be attached to the job. They're being issued a certificate with a passport photo. And so mm. that is supposed to be on the work site. Um, the certified renovator is responsible for making the necessary notifications. You were talking about the Renovate Right booklet yep. at, at their expense. Yes. Um, and also they're supposed to be providing on-the-job training for the other workers and doing that post-cleaning yes. verification. Yes, the wet wipes. On the, right, the you wet know, wipes, the dirty diaper test, whatever yeah. <laughs> you want to call it. Um, 
Yeah, no. it, it's awkward having this cleaning verification, but before there was no, there was no requirement at all for anybody to be held to any standard. So right, but uh, the, uh, yeah, uh, that's true. I uh, agree, uh, but some of it maybe maybe we could. I mean, look, here's one more one more in this little thing. The contractor that's certified, just another hidden cost I might throw out there. The certified contractor has to say stay on site at all times. Is not allowed to leave the job site with an employee that's uncertified. So. Let's so they should say, all get no, certified. No, well, just for just yes, for certain but let's, activities. But let's say yeah, what well, let's not say entirely a, true. Well, good rebuttal, but I'm still not done. <laughs> well, it, I, the fact that it's not true is a good rebuttal. Thanks. <laughs> oh, that part's not true. I, I no, thought they, 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 they are allowed to, to leave. They, they have to be there for certain activities. It's not that they're chained to the work site or anything. Okay, because be I was going to say by phone. But yes, they're responsible for the checklists mm-hmm. that are you required. know, and the contractor can okay. get all the subcontractors to take these the free class. I mean, you can't do it okay. right now, as I said, they're all filled up. But eventually, you can get everybody who works for you to be have have taken a let's safe work practice class. Okay, for free. For of, free. Okay. Because I was just concerned. Through the, through the generosity of Monroe <laughs> County and the okay. city of Rochester. Well, right. and it's sponsored by HUD. By HUD, HUD exactly. Right. Because, yeah. development. Um, because you're lucky you talk. we have both grants. You, you know? guys are lucky you talked me off that ledge real quick. <laughs> Carmen, I want to ask you a quick question. Um, with this certification here for area contractors, is that going to move us one step closer to registration or licensing of contractors in our area. I know that we're coming on the uh, home improvement season, which is already full embarked. And um, I, since you're live in the studio today and you are always on the up and up with these kind of issues, we, we can get some people in here trying to uh, scam us homeowners this time of year. Oh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It's a little off topic from the lead, right. but it's an important topic, and Carm's got the lowdown. So. Yeah. Well, there's, there's about right now about 20 to 25 Contractors from uh, from South Carolina yeah. and from Canada that are working right now. Mostly they're in the the driveway ceiling business or the chimney repair or roofing business. But uh, the si- situation is they do do some work uh, as far as windows and doors and painting mm-hmm. and things like that. And they're always driving around town uh, telling you I got extra this left over, extra that left over. But the situation is we we probably will never get licensing in New York State. Uh, it's a situation that is, is very difficult because of the political field here. Out of all of the states, there's only nine of them not licensed. Uh, we've proved that licensing or registration will not hurt the consumer. It will protect the consumer, and it will keep some of these bums from coming up here. Yep. But the situation with this lead uh, is, is just another thing that these guys will do. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, it's whether it's myself or any other customer, when you're shopping for a car, wash machines, or whatever, you're looking for the lowest price. You will still have customers, whether they know they got lead problems, are going to go with a, the lowest price. Uh, uninsured contractors, improper mm-hmm. contracts. So the situation is very difficult. We talked about uh, free lead classes to, to help the contractors. The situation was is that after these guys, they call and holler at us because they say you gave us free lead classes, dates and things. And they're all booked up until December, so we can forget about that. Some of them already got bumped by the the landlords because the landlord, I believe, is well, first. Well, one of the things I also wanted to, to make sure we, we, we uh, clarify is that it's not about job description. It's not just contractors that need to be RRP certified. Mm-hmm. It's about the type of work. So yeah. if you're disturbing six square feet on an interior be you an electrician or HVAC yep. or anything, yeah. or 20 square feet on an exterior, you also need to be RRP certified. So it's the yep. kind of work, it's not yep. necessarily your job title. Thank uh, you for clarifying that. I should have done that early on, but that's I appreciate that. We had one uh, a job that came up this week, and it was a, contra- a painting contractor, who actually a wallpapering contractor, wallpaper, uh-huh. who was scraping wallpaper and found out that there was lead paint behind the wallpaper. He wasn't certified uh-huh. and was in a panic because he thought he was going to get fined and everything else. Oh, yeah. It's scary. And him. it's like, what do I do now? I scraped all this stuff off. All this dust is flying all over the house. Yep. The homeowner's concerned. I'm not certified, so it was a panic yeah. situation. That's well, and that scared the yeah, it scared the guy that's doing the work. That's that's what the 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 thing that concerned me was part of the fear. These guys are paralyzed, you know, right. at least for the near term. <laughs> well, and it's I I think the EPA will be a little lax right now because they, they know what's happening. I mean, this is a, a panic situation. And April 22nd uh, was a date that wasn't uh, they didn't give you too much forewarning on that. Okay, 